A very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Friday edition of the show. I'm Yemi Adebayo. On the show tonight, we're going to talk boxing. That's how we're starting off on the show tonight. We're going to talk the return of the Bronze Bomber, Deontay Wilder. We'll talk about him getting back into the ring and how far can he go. We'll talk about the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup. We'll talk about, uh, of course, the World Cup. Uh, it's a few, barely over a month to the FIFA 2022 World Cup. We'll talk about that as well. And we will not forget our clubs on the continent, talking about uh, CAF club competition, uh, the CAF Champions League and the CAF Confederation Cup. As usual, I don't do this alone. My partner, Austin Okonakwan, is with me. We're going to take this ride together to take you on a trip across the money-spinning world of sports. Greetings to you, Austin. Once again, it's a good day to talk sports. Always a delight to be on the show. I mean, sporty greetings to you and everyone joining us from different parts of the world. What a story, the Flamingos. They needed to make a statement today at the FIFA on the 17 Women's World Cup, and they did just that, thrashing New Zealand. And I mean, with that, they got their campaign back on track. You mentioned duty while they're getting ready for that. Um, Everywhere tied to eliminate a bout, tricky one for him going against Elenius, can't wait to see that one. I've actually missed Deontay Wilder, so let's see what he can do. The bronze bomber back into the boxing ring. Also, we'll continue our look at the FIFA a World Cup that took place in Qatar. I think it's a pretty loaded show, yeah, man. I'm super pumped up for this. All right, let's dive straight into it. Let's talk about boxing. Uh, of course, mm -hmm. uh, Deontay Wilder back. Um, it took a lot for him to uh, get back just over a year after his loss, a very very painful loss to uh, Tyson Fury. A lot of people uh, felt probably that loss would damage uh, his career. And at some point, there were talks about him quitting boxing. Uh, but he's back, and uh, he's been able to get back on his feet. He comes up against two-time uh, European champion Robert Elenius, aged 38. And you talk about it. It's uh, a title eliminator uh, for him. And, um, I mean... I'm happy to have Deontay Wilder back, and um, I'm not sure if he's ready for the big time, but at least it, whatever happens, he'll get this under his belt, and we'll, we'll see how uh, he goes from there. I think it's a good way to get back into it, but he's got a, a pretty tricky fighter in this guy right there, Ilineos. And, and, and he has all, always, you know, been, been relevant, particularly um, in Europe, and trying to, you know, get some more relevance in heavyweight boxing. And I think it's actually a good test for Deontay Wilder. Um, I just want to see if he has moved on from what happened with the fight the fight against Tyson Fury, because as you mentioned, that one really did hurt him so bad. But he needs to concentrate on this fight. There's still so much in it uh, going against Elenius. But, but look, I mean, with heavyweight boxing, you never say never. I, I we've seen it over and over again. Before someone starts jumping to say, oh, this is going to be an easy fight for Deontay Wilder, calm down. It doesn't work that way in heavyweight boxing, particularly at a time when everyone knows that the guy you don't want to fight, or maybe let's say guys you don't want to fight now, is Tyson Fury and to an extent Alexander Usyk. The other guys, they know that the bitches can go around. <laughs> That's true. That's true. All right, Austin, stand by. Uh, of course, there was a way in today as both fighters prepared for yeah. that, that bout. I was curious, though. I, I watched the clip. I was waiting to see if Deontay Wilder was going to scream and shout as he always does. And he, he did. He did. So I guess the bronze bomber is back, uh, like you said. All right, let's just quickly uh, show that to you. The bronze bomber up against Robert Alenius. They came in for the way in. He is lighter now. He has sh he shedded, I think, about 24 pounds. And if you consider mm -hmm. his weight now uh, to the previous fight uh, that he had. Let's quickly listen to what both fighters had to say. We'll come back for more. What's we'll supposed to write? And now, ladies and gentlemen, here. Two hundred fourteen and one half pounds. Two hundred four for the bronze bomber Deontay Wilder. 
presents the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Heavyweight World. All right, we are joined along. You know, what can I say? The Viking is here, ready to fight. Is this a must win? Until Wilder is, is back, baby, so watch out. You heard it from the Bronze Bomber. Kate is the battle ready world ranked heavyweight contender known as the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Robert Hellenius. All right, welcome back, and uh, you've listened to both boxers. We are looking at their state of mind, state of preparedness uh, for that bout as both boxers uh, weighed in uh, for uh, the upcoming bout. I can't say it's eagerly anticipated, but a lot of us still want to see if Deontay Wilder still has the goods. So we're going to wait uh, for that. All right, Shaq Dufisa joins me now, as joins us now as we uh, continue with the show. Greetings to you, uh, Shaq. Thanks for finding our time uh, to be with us on the show tonight. <laughs> and the first thing I'm throwing at you, Deontay Wilder back. Yeah, good to you, Yemi. You know, it's always good to have you on the show, you know, and, uh, and you're looking very good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, Deontay um, Wilder back, I think it's a wonderful one for him, no doubt. Uh, after having those back-to-back -back losses against the same opponent, you know, it's more like it can create an embargo in your, uh, like, like in your psyche. Like, it was like when Arsenal were losing to Manu <laughs> for a very long period of time before they broke the jinx. Yeah. You know, but then, uh, like um, um, Austin said, the, for, the other play, for the other players in the game, um, the beating can go, <laughs> can go around. Um, for him right now, he has to build his profile again, more like fight the other guys mm -hmm. and all that. Although there were rumors along the line that he wanted to fight AJ. There are rumors, but those rumors, are, you know, those are rumors, and there's nothing concrete that has that. But uh, I, first of all, you look at him that he, he's, 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 he's the better fighter here. There's no doubt about that. The, guy, the other guy is not in shape, you know, he's in better shape, and then he has a point to prove. Though, although that can put him under a lot of pressure, but he, he, for him right now, if he doesn't win this fight, then that's done and out. He has to take it with Let me take something from that. what Austin said, uh, because you sounded like the way most of us are. His opponent is a two time yeah. European champion. Yes. You, you talked about him not being in shape, same way Tyson Fury was wasn't in, shape. In, in, in the first fight. Yes. And boxing has taught us lessons. Same way too with Andrew Ruiz. Yes. Like, really yeah, yeah, you look at this, the fighting is not all about um, how all about shape or being in shape, but it's an advantage for you being in shape, shape or not being in shape. Yeah. Because can, when you are heavier, last long. You, can, you, can, you can last long. When you're, when you're slimmer, you can last longer. When you're heavier, you're, you're, you're not mobile enough. Mm -hmm. So that can put that can, impede, that can put him in pain, in pain. And you know this, this lad that, his biggest strength has always been attack, attack, attack. So if he keeps attacking and the other, the lad doesn't, he's not mobile, he's not enough. mobile enough to be able to defend him, then he's in big trouble. He's in, he's in big trouble. That's where the issue will be, and that's where will be the tactic tonight. And what is not like football that there's always there's going to be maybe 90 minutes. No, how he can how you react to, on how the sport? How he react on the sport? How can he cope with his attacking mechanism in this context? Can we determine whether he will go far or not? So that alone. I, mean, I know people think about the context of, of, of Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury not being in shape and all that. Tyson Fury, as is first of all, is a renowned boxer. He has a lot of experience. Until he had that alcohol, alcohol issues, he wasn't this bad in, in shape. Or else, can, or else can prove otherwise. So the context of him and the, of of of, um, of um, Tyson Fury and, and him, this guy is yeah, different. There are two different contexts. Not to not to not to, not to um, bring down the the, the the lad here, but it is what it is for for him. And let's see how the fight pans out. I'm hope for a very open fight. And we all know that. Dijonio Wada is a very, very tough fighter. He's a strong fighter. He's a big, good person. And I, I remember the last time when he fought Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury gave him credit that he's a tough yes. fighter. They fought three times. They had a draw, two losses. Um, the, 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 Particularly the third one. The third one. The third one. The second loss, he, well, he, give and take. But the third one was, you know, he, he bled Top and all of that. But then, this fight for uh, Wilder is a do or die for fear. So that's what it is for him. All right. OK. okay. Let me go to Austin, um, Delta Wilder. I'm reading a lot of meaning into that way he mm -hmm. it looks a lot nicer as a person shaking hands with his opponents. No mean words, no cuss words. Um, I'm beginning to like the new Delta Wilder that I'm seeing. 
But then the other Wilder is talking about after this fight, it's, he's already talking as if I'm going to beat this guy and better, <laughs> better get me Anthony Joshua or uh, the Ukrainian uh, champion, Yusik. Well, of course, he won't talk about Tyson Fury because uh, <laughs> he, he, wouldn't want to, he wouldn't want to get any of that anymore. But my, my, my thought, and, and I want you to respond to this, is do you think that Deontay Wilder is still a big draw? That even after, if he, if he gets to dispatch this guy, do you think a lot of people will still want to see him fight against those they consider to be the top guys in the heavyweight division? Absolutely, yes, Yemi. You know, because if you look at Deontay Wilder, it brings some of those things we want to see in the sports. He's got charisma. It, it gives you the fight before the real fight. It, when he was screaming bomb squad, we were expecting it, and he's back to it. So uh, Deontay Wilder is the guy that, you know, if you put him out for a big fight, then you, you're ready to make some good money out of it. So, yes, if he beats Robert Hellenius, it will be uh, good to see him go against the big guys. And also forget that he's a top American boxer and those promoters will go on, you know, to push for big fights. Well, he needs to be wary, you know. I like the fact that he's being confident. But when you come off that sort of back-to-back -back defeats against Tyson Fury, you need to be a more careful boxer. For instance, um, Hellenius weighing 200. 53 LB is his heaviest since 2016. You mean that's tactical? You could tell that his team they've monitored what Tyson Fury did, and so they want to stay heavier. Jonte Wilder said he was sluggish against Tyson Fury in the first fight, and so he's losing a lot of weight now, so he can get more power in his punch. But in heavyweight boxing, if you're not going down, you should be able to also take those punches. I think that's what Robert Elenius and his team, they're trying to do. And he has also sparred with Deontay Wilder. So there's a, there, there is some amount of knowledge in there for Elenius that he can use. But hey, this is Deontay Wilder, the, the, the bronze bomber. We know what he did. I'm, Defending his title about 10 times before uh, he lost to, to Tyson Fury. So it's not pushover. Um, is the knockout specialist, and I'm sure he's still got some power in those hands of his. So he's confident. He wants to go out there, beat this guy, get back into prominence, you know? And so we start talking about those big fights that, you know, put some good cash into pay-per-view and world viewership. And I think that's what boxing is all about. It's all about the money, and this guy knows it. And Americans, that's what they do with the business of boxing. It's all about the money. So, yes, Yemi, if he beats this guy, he has a right to call out everyone except Tyson Fury and Alexander <laughs> Yussi. You, you know what? I, I'm about to yield the floor to you, but since you said something uh, that has made me remember... Uh, this question. Even all the guys, most of the guys who were writing the reviews for this bout, they kept on yeah. saying, yes, he won 40 plus fights, but the biggest test in his career, he failed it. And that was against mm. Tyson Fury. He's, he's knocked mm. out quite a lot of people, but a lot of people point fingers and say, who are those guys that he actually knocked out? Mm. So, do you agree with those who say that? I don't agree with them. Look, heavyweight boxing is just one punch. And if you check the fight he had with Luis Ortiz, the King Kong got so close with Deontay Wilder. But Deontay Wilder has got one mission. He doesn't want to waste time with you in that boxing ring so he doesn't get tired. That was what Tyson Fury did to him, you know? He, he knows he can't really go the distance, so he just wants to, he wants to end it on, on time. This is what we were saying about Anthony Joshua until um, Andy Ruiz dropped him. So if Jonte Wilder had lost to one of those guys that we didn't expect, would have said he wasn't a quality boxer. But he is a top-notch boxer all day, every day. When he lost to Tyson Fury, he was unbeaten. So two undefeated boxers met. Someone needed to lose even the first fight. There was no winner. Tells you how competitive he is, you know. And I still think he's competitive. So nobody should, you know, should check out um, the records or achievements of Jonte Wilder. Uh, sometimes... Records, not sometimes, most times, records are made to be broken. And if you are undefeated, someone must beat you. That's why um, Tyson Fury will go for the right money because he knows that if he wants to continue, he's going to be beaten someday. So I don't, I don't, I don't belong to that group here, particularly with heavyweight boxing, where you blink and you start asking questions. All right. Let me yield the floor to you. You said it. Let's it go. happened. It happened. The girls... 
And now our destiny is in our own hands. We really yeah. don't need calculators. Just don't <laughs> lose. Just don't lose. Don't. And it's, yeah. it's going to be enough. But first, let's talk about what happened today. Very good victory over New Zealand. Mm. Not just victory. I mean, the way they played. It's, it seems like they, they watched this show last night. They were entertaining. They played purpose-driven football. They played with character. They played as a team. They understood the mission. And boom, they gave us four fantastic goals. That's football right there. And they showed us that, look, we are a team that you can look forward to. And when Didion scored that goal, you know, she, she just came and then gave us a start out of a goal. And, and I loved it so much because you could tell that Today, there was a plan, and they executed that plan. I've been trying to reach Coach Ban Colley, but I think he's busy trying to get these girls ready for the next game against Chile. I love what we saw today, Yemi, and, and if they keep this going, definitely they have what it takes to get to the next round of the competition and keep believing. It was a, it was a fantastic show of football, and one that really shows that Nigeria is a country that is blessed with talent, young talent, that if we get the system right, they can actually go on to be world beaters. I'm so proud of these girls, and I'm sure Shegun Vincent, you feel the same way, particularly that they needed to bounce back, and they did just that. Of course, we needed to win that game, man. That game was a must win for us against New Zealand. And then winning that game four goals to nil, that showed that uh, they were very hungry winning that game after the, um, the, 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 the bad defeat or the defeat, as the case may be, in the first game. Um, we have to win the last game. There's no argument about that because playing to draw is like more like uh, we're not Stoke City or not mm -hmm. Stoke mm -hmm. City. We need to, because going into a game to draw can mean that you can, can lose in that game. Yeah, and sure. that can be very, very terrible. Disastrous. And, and then psychologically, if, if your football is it's not just what happens on the field of play. There's a psyche behind it. So um, we need to win that game. A wonderful result, no doubt. Um, like, um, every, like every great manager will say, they've won this game on to the next one, on to the next one. They have to move in, win the next game. That's keep, keep the head down, good win. Don't over-celebrate. Keep your head in the game. Do what's next to be done because we need to break All our right. play twos, which we have, we have not done. We have not done so much at this at the at the, at the FIFA Under 17 Women's World Cup. We've not won it before, so we, for, for now we need to find a way to break those play twos. Yeah, as against talent, Nigeria have a lot of talent. I've covered grassroots both for male, for female, at the underst level, even at even at, at, at various grassroots level, we've have we have talent, and these talent guys are coming to, coming into the the the, 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 the the system itself. So for us right now, aside from winning tournament and going for a tournament, like I said in the um, the last week I. When I came here, I said that one of the, the major things we need to do is that how can we these players move up the ranks, moving from under 17 to under 20, uh, and um, playing the playing at the Olympics. This are done. How playing going to the national team? That is what they call the institution right. planning. That's how we need to go. Okay. And aside from that. We don't want to hear a story where they were fantastic at the under 17 World Cup and then they never made it big into the to play in the bigger clubs or in playing Europe or Asia or whatever. So that is the step for right. it. This, this, this tournament just shoots their career out. What they do next out of it is the most important thing. I agree with you. All right, let's talk about the results as you see them on the screen. It was a good day for Africa. So let's start with Group A. Uh, India, well, not known for football and, you know, cricket and some other things. Uh, they lost to Morocco uh, by three goals. And the, the Titanic battle we expected uh, between Brazil and United States, it, it turned out to be what we all expected. Uh, just, uh, uh, I mean, a goal apiece. And those one that brought smiles to our faces, joy to our hearts, Nigeria, the Flamingos, Coach uh, Bankole Lokeri's team, hammering, because a hammering uh, of uh, New Zealand uh, four goals. And just when you were thinking about what we needed, the Germans, in my own opinion, have done 50% of the job for uh, the Flamingos. Hit Chile 6 nil, and. Um, of course, Sheku Vincent doesn't like what I said earlier, but I'm going to say it again. <laughs> what we need to get to the next round is just don't lose. But I guess you don't go to a football game to play not to lose. Go all out there and, and see if you can win. So that's a confirmation of what happened uh, today. Uh, let's just go back to Austin as we yield the floor uh, to him again. Uh, Austin, it's good uh, to see this happen uh, with uh, uh, the girls. And uh, probably just a few minutes before we go on, on a break. But all questions answered. It, and it, like you said, it's not just because of the scoreline. All questions mm -hmm. answered. And it also buttress what you said about their performance against the Germans. Because a lot of people said Chile, Chile was strong, Chile was strong. They hit them for six. And if not for one or two, maybe lapses, it could have ended in a draw between 
uh, Nigeria and, and, and Germany. So even this result against Chile makes you, the outcome of the game between Chile and Germany makes you appreciate what we did against Germany because it was mm. a good performance. I agree. You know, from this point, the Flamingos, they just need to believe. They need to sustain the momentum. They need to stay focused. Don't even look at what Germany did to Chile today. Just know that you're going out there to beat Chile and, you know, get, get your, your ticket to the next round, you know, secured. So I, I love what I saw today. In fact, I mean, you know, I... I was so sure of the quality from the first game against Germany. I don't like talking about preparation before competition, but when you take a look at the quality in the team from the qualifiers, then you can start, you know, expecting some stuff. So shout out to the Flamingos. I love that dance they did right after I did young score that stun out of a goal. We hope to see more dances when they, you know, beat Chile to advance at the competition. It's supposed to light on channels, television. Let's go on this quick break. Now, when we come back, still so much more to talk about. So you don't want to go anywhere. Stay. Welcome back, Sports Tonight on Channels Television. Some will be wondering why is Austin smiling tonight. The Flamingos uh, gave Nigeria good reasons to smile after beating New Zealand by four goals to nothing. Four beautiful goals. Beautiful game of football they played to show that Nigeria is indeed a country blessed with so much talent. If you want to celebrate the Flamingos and wish them well at the FIFA on the 17 Women's World Cup taking place in India, just send us a message on Twitter. I'm going to go right there now to, you know, read your best wishes to them on Twitter. We are channels underscore sports. What do you want the Flamingos to do against Chile and moving forward in the competition? I'd like to hear from you. Sports tonight on Channels Television. Send us a message on Twitter at channels underscore sports. Hear me? Let's go to the to the main World Cup. I don't know when I say the main World Cup, people come and say, Austin, what do you mean? The FIFA Men's World Cup. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, that's our next uh, port of call. And uh, so to just let our viewers know, it's 37 uh, days uh, to go. You're going to see the official confirmation. That's it right there on your screen. 37 days to go to the FIFA World Cup. And uh, we must say, first one to be held uh, by an Arab country, first one in the Middle East, first tournament to be played in just one city. And uh, that's an amazing feat. And I hope uh, the guys will be able to uh, pull it off. And all uh, the other issues uh, surrounding uh, treatment of migrant workers, issues of transportation, I also hope that will be sorted out as well. Tonight on the show, we continue our preview uh, to uh, the World Cup. And what we're doing today is to take a look at Group F. We'll be going round the groups. We'll also uh, take a look at the individual countries, their star players and all that. But for today, let's look at Group F. And uh, you see the teams in Group F, Spain, Germany, Japan, and Costa Rica. That's the makeup of uh, Group F. Uh, very strong teams in this group. The Europeans, uh, Spain and Germany, uh, looking like their heads and shoulders above Japan and Costa Rica. Before I go back to Austin, let me come back to uh, Shegun. Japan, Costa Rica, Spain, and Germany. But before you say anything, let me remind you of 2014. Mm -hmm. In a group that had Italy and England, uh, yeah. Costa Rica finished as the best in that group. Yeah. So before you fall into that trap to say Spain, Germany, spare thought for the guys from Costa Rica. Yeah, you gave me a wild thought there, but then uh, football is football. Um, yeah. You look at this group, you look at the Costa Rica, you look at, the Jap you look at Costa Rica, Japan, mm -hmm. Belgium, um, Germany, and Spain. Remember in the last World Cup, Germany gave Belgium a run for the money. I think they went through extra time before. I think Fellini scored that goal. I can't remember who scored the goal. In specific, Costa Rica. Oh, okay, Japan, yeah. Yes, yes. I can't, remember um, Costa Rica, a boogie side. Mm -hmm. You know, he took, I think they took um, Holland to the penalties in 2014 World yeah. Cup. So you look at this side, these sides are very, very stubborn side. They're not side, they don't give you too much space. Mm -hmm. Their side are very ultra defensive. They play the pack, the boss system. Japan are very rugged side. You know, they're very tenacious. 
strong. covers very strong, can, can cover lots, lots, lots and lots of grounds. This is a style, this was a style that Germany had, you know, they are relentless and they call, they have what they call German machines. Yeah. You know, Spain, you know, Tiki Taka still want to pass the ball and all of that. Although, Spain and Germany are coming from a place where they're, they're transcending to India, they're, they're, they're yes. trans transcending, meaning that they're bringing a lot of new players. A new into, generation. New generation coming to the system now, likes of Rodri, likes of, um, likes of Rodri, the keeper, the keeper from Bilbao. Um, a couple of other players coming in there, Gavi, Gavi Pedri, Pedri, Koke to some extent, um, um, Garcia, Laporte, and Germany too. We have Musella coming in there, Kai Havertz mm -hmm. coming in there, Timo Werner. Timo Werner has found his scoring puts again. Um, you, you see all of, you see all of that in the in, uh, in the mix for them. So that's there's still, there's still a bit of some level of or some unbalance in that team, in, in not in other prospects. So, so they are good, they have the stars, they have the coach and all of that, but there are still glimpses of this in that. What, what, on a very good day, you, uh, if, I, if, I, if I book a, if I go, if I, if I book a bookie, you will go for Spain and Germany, and on a very good day, I feel like Spain and Germany should take that group, unless a miracle happens. Miracles do happen in football anyway. So, but then, uh, but it's not going to be an easy shot for their games against Japan and Costa Rica, because if, um, Spain either draws or loses to Costa Rica, they, they put themselves under pressure that they have to defeat Germany. Mm -hmm. So who takes first in this group is very, very, very important because first in the group means that you've missed, quote and unquote, the weaker link in the other group, quote and unquote. Supposedly. Supposedly, like, quote and unquote. So, but then, the, this is what it is in football. Uh, they have to play their game, and Luis Enrique and, um, and um, German, German's coach have to put their hands on deck. There were cracks in the wall in Germany against, uh, against England. They, 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 they led at some point in time. German, German, um, England came back from the mix. Spain too are having their issues. Although they had a wonderful game against Portugal. Portugal too had a lot of chances. They are not yet solidly, solidly yet defensively in the, um, the, the Euros. We saw what happened to them against, um, also not against Italy, if I'm not mistaken. They had their chance. They had those moments too there. Until those teams create some level of um, as, as, uh, some, uh, some, some level of um, how the team can be ascertained, how they play, how they work around that solutions, balance. that balance, and that's the word, that balance, they will still be having this crack on the wall. And teams like Japan, teams like Costa Rica, they're going to want to hit them on the break. How they cope in those, in those instances will determine if they're going to win okay. this game All right. or not. Check. Don't dance away from the question. Your, your, your picks. Like I said, I said you know, when I said Spain and Germany all day. All day. It's been all, day. all day, every day. All day, every day. Okay. All right, Austin, uh, let, let me come to you. Uh, Shekun says, all day, every day, Spain and Germany. Uh, even though he admits, and I agree with him 100%, those teams are in a transition. Those teams mm. don't look at their pedigree. They have their issues. Um, yeah. a, a couple of players are still there. That's got to be the bridge that links the old and the new Probably some of those players may even exit after this tournament. Mm. And, but it still feels Japan and Costa Rica may not be able to exploit the seeming weakness in those. So it's giving it to Spain and Germany. Uh, I don't know about you. I'm tempted to support him too. I, to be honest, I'm tempted <laughs> to support him. Uh, but football teaches us lessons every day. So I, I don't know where you stand. Jago, let me tell you a quick story about football. It goes this way. And so Germany plays Spain, and it ended 0-0. And the Samurai Blue of Japan took on Costa Rica and won 2-0. And now Japan, they're on top of the group. And then when Japan and maybe Spain or Germany played, it ended 1-1. And then Costa Rica goes on to play with maybe a draw also with Spain. Now Shagun. I put you in a situation where you start wondering what's going on in that group. But that's football for you. That can really happen, you know. So easily, pundits can come up and say, we we'll give it to Spain, we we'll give it to Germany. Yes, Spain is Germany, you know. Look at their pedigree and everything they've done with world football. But you can't take anything out of the samurai blue, you know. And for me, I love upsets. And the Japanese team, you know them for their pace and to an extent that they have discipline and character particularly when they want to frustrate you. So you can't take it out of them. Then Costa Rica is your potential banana skin. They just went there to do the jam, to do the damage when you underrate them. So it's a very tricky group, a tricky group for Spain and Germany. I have seen it a lot of times, you know. Uh, if you take a look at the last World Cup, Spain also met this sort of, you know, situations and then struggled till they met Russia and then they lost that match. So. It is what it is. We can we can start before the competition and say we give it to Germany and Spain. But 
right there, Yemi. I know that's why you don't want to go with Shegun Vincent. Something is telling you that is an upset somewhere around that group F. You see it. Yeah. I, I mean, that, that's, you, you read my mind uh, mm -hmm. clearly uh, on that. Uh, but before we leave this matter altogether, uh, the seeming weakness. Because look, when you talk about Spain and Germany, it's clear. It's clear. Apart from, even Luis Enrique, when he was speaking a few days ago, he was asked about teams that he feels, and he said, look, everybody's favorite is France. France, of all the European giants, France, even though you're talking about injuries to Paul Pogba, injuries to Ngolo Kante, but France appears to be the team that looks settled. Of all the big teams, when you talk about Italy, I mean, sorry, Italy and not the World Cup, look at France, Spain, Germany, those really, uh, the top four, uh, really. So those you're issues... Gonna, you're, not gonna, you're not going to mention the three Lions? No, really? no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 I wouldn't mention them, I wouldn't mention them, so, but, do you still see them, that, that's where I'm going at with, with my preamble, mm. we've talked about their weakness, but do you see them as potential World Cup, with, uh, no, not even, any, any team at the World Cup is a potential World Cup winner, but as favourites to win the World Cup, can you uh, say no. Germany uh, and Spain, with the way they no. are? No, 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 because, they, they need to show that they're ready to go compete for the title. You know, if you want to call teams that can go on to win the World Cup, you already see it. You've mentioned that they're going through a transition at the moment. So we need to see them play at the World Cup. Uh, maybe they can get better, you know, match after match. But right now, no, I'm not going to say Spain or Germany can go on to uh, win the World Cup. They can get better when they get into the World Cup, feel the, you know, the vibes, and they start improving as a team. But right now, uh, somewhere, somehow, they're still trying to get, you know, to their best potentials, you know, and I don't think they, they, they've got time, we've, we've got, you know, barely days to, to go to the World Cup, and it's just something about the World Cup. You will still meet those setbacks before you fully assemble the All team right. that will go to the World Cup, so you don't really know what's coming to still hit this German and Spanish team, but, but don't take anything from them. They've got the, the players, they've got the flair, they've got the pedigree. They can actually go there and stun teams. But because of the phase that they're going through, sometimes, you know, it takes time to, to gel. And that's why I can't, I can't tag them favorites. Okay. Uh, Shegu, I want to go back to Austin. Mm -hmm. to, but quick one. Can you just, at this point, mm -hmm. with what you know at this point, quick answer, could you say Spain, Germany, any of those two, can you tag them as favorites to win the World Cup? They will just be eliminated for second round quarterfinal at best. Or it's like a miracle for if there's anyone that can actually win the World Cup or be a candidate amongst these two. I think it's Spain. Spain had glimpses at the 20 at the um, just concluded Euros. But then it's the Euros anyway, but they seem to have to some extent their house in order. So maybe Spain in to that light. But at best, quarterfinals. Okay. All right. Let's leave it at that. Uh, so Austin, the floor is yours now. Let's talk about um, and reason being You've been very optimistic, and I have to give you credit uh, for that. Mm. Calf Club competitions mm. on a Friday night, it's still three and three. Yeah. And I hope that on Tuesday night, I'll be somewhere watching anyway. Uh, I hope it's still going to be three and three. Fingers crossed, you know. I'm, I'm still going to tweet what I tweeted to uh, the three clubs. I said, go out there and prove yourselves. Believe. They just need to believe. That's it. Just go out there and say, look, level playing ground, we've got the advantage right now until we start the second leg, play two United, Rivers United, and Quara United. They have the advantage over those three North African teams. That's what they need to take into that game. They also need to stay focused. They need to have the right character because it's going to be very difficult. These North Africans will come out there to intimidate. They will pose a lot of threats, but they just need to stay focused. And that's why I keep saying, that was what Remonstars did against Asfa. For instance, look at this goal that Rivers United considered. You need to stop this against the run of play. Make sure that you are solid. You know what you're doing. Man-to-man -man marking. Avoid mistakes because you're going away now. Don't let these sort of things happen. 2-1 is a very... Very tricky scoreline. 
But who says it can't end goalless? You know, who says it can't end 1-1? But just try to make sure that this result counts because the players worked hard for it. Right after they considered the scored, they came back into the game. And that's good show of character. They should be doing that also when they play the second leg. If you concede, make sure you score. But yeah, I mean, in all, let's 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 just say shout out to the team. And if we take a look at the fixtures again uh, for the second for the second leg, you could tell that it's advantage for the Nigerian teams, particularly Quara United. They've got a rare opportunity to write their names in the history of African football. They must not blow it. Beating ROS Beken 3-1 in Lagos is something we'll always talk about. They are the current champions of Africa and they fell that way to Quara United. It tells you that we've got it going for our teams. And you watch that game, Yemi, you saw that they kept fighting till yeah. they got back into it, took the lead and went on to you know, solidify it with a win. So, um, Quara United, Rivers United, play two United, Big game, big game requires big attitude, you know, get into the mood that, look, if you can come this far, you can keep it going. So best wishes to all of them. I know it's going to be very tough for Play 2 United going against Esperance. It's also going to be tough for Rivers United going against Widat Casablanca. Ares Bekin will come at Quara United with everything they've got. But yeah, me at the end of the day, football will give us the winners. Yeah, I hope so. And uh, you have it on your screen. Final preliminary round. Second leg, Saturday's fixture, Sparrows of Tunisia up against Plateau United, uh, cutty of the first leg, Plateau enjoy 2-1 advantage. On Sunday, uh, with that, Athletic of Morocco will be up against Rivers uh, United of Nigeria. And we'll, again, courtesy of the first leg, Rivers United enjoy a 2-1 uh, advantage. And CAF Confederation Cup, uh, I mean, defending champions RS became up against uh, Quora United of Nigeria and Quora United enjoy a 3-1 advantage. Let me go to Shagun Vincent uh, quickly before we yield back to uh, Austin. Three in three as a Friday night. At the end, by this time tomorrow, we will know uh, if we're still going to have three in three, but I'm well open. Which of the teams could you stick out your neck for either in the CAF Confederation Cup or in the CAF Champions League that, and say, yeah, I think this one has a good chance? Ah, this, is, this is a tough one. Uh, first of all, I apologize to Austin. Austin said that um, there are all the teams that are going to win and then they actually won. Um, our problem is you look at Plateau United, you look at Square United, and you look at um, Rivers United, their past five games, you look at the games they've lost, the games have been on the travel. You yes. know, the travel, the last game that they played on the travel has been the issue. Now, you look at Quarry United here, yeah, they're enjoying three goals to one, meaning that, meaning that at least McKinney must have to score two unreplied two goals. Two unreplied goals. And on the travel again, we're going to travel. Um, we're going to Morocco, a hostile ground, the crowd is not good, yes. and, and you, have, you have an electric atmosphere, more like Anfield. So, how we play on these travels with the I mean, whether we'll qualify or not. Do we have a chance? Of course, we have a very big chance looking at the first leg results. Or, or less otherwise. If we can get it, if we can I mean, reduce... just take a look at this goal. If they can keep their composure, play with this same level of confidence, but playing at their opponent's ground, would they have this level of composure, this level of maturity to go a goal down and come back? This is where um, the issue of the coach and the senior players Come after come to the party, have to keep their nerves down, have to create their composure, yeah. have to control the game because uh, uh, how can they control the game? Reduce spaces, attack the bigger spaces, reduce the spaces. Little, so you don't little, concede early. Little margin for error because, and that's another thing in the game because if they concede early, it's going to change the yes. tide of things. Pressure. So, uh, uh, um, how, how would in those, how would, how we control those things in those circumstances to determine whether we we'll qualify or not? But I hope. As, as by next two, by God's grace, we we'll have three and three. Then before they have become three, I hope so they will continue with three. So basically, that's what that's what it is for for uh, our Nigerian our Nigerians our Nigerian teams that are on the national party in the um, all right. in the continental games. Okay, all right. So um, that's it. Um, let me go back to Austin, but uh, just we have a few minutes to go. Austin, let's come to your head. 
I wish we could go on and on, but maybe after the show, when we're not here, we'll talk about all of that. Let's come to your end. Big games in the English Premier League, and of course, uh, some people say it's the biggest game on the planet when, whenever Real Madrid and, and Barcelona uh, take to the field. But start us off uh, with the English Premier League. Uh, of course, we have just about three minutes before we uh, leave the studio, but pick of the bunch, definitely, as we Liverpool and Man Manchester City. Big, big game, you know, you hear me? And, and a lot of um, the analysis are saying that Liverpool can actually win that game because they need to prove a point. Somehow, Liverpool need to get their season back. And, and they showed it in the, in the UEFA Champions League. I was just like, they should have left some of the goals, you know, for Manchester City. Uh, but, but just as I said against, you know, in the game between Arsenal and Manchester City, um, Arsenal and Liverpool, I want Liverpool and Man City to give us yeah. an entertaining game of football. I want them to score goals. And at the end of the day, let the team that really, you know, want the win go on to win. But I don't want a drab game. I don't want a game where teams are... I, it's difficult to see that against okay. Man City, uh, say, but... I guess... Yeah. yeah, sorry. I guess I misinformed you. We actually, we have to go right about now. And so, uh, <laughs> it's a wrap. Uh, you know, yeah. the, 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 things like this happen. And hopefully, uh, whenever we have the chance again, we'll, we'll, we'll cover the grounds. Definitely, it's always an action-packed world of sports. We'll be back again next week to talk about everything that happened from the El Clasico to the English Premier League and, of course, uh, the heavyweight boxing. Yemi, that's the show. For me, right here in London, I'm Austin Okonakwan. In everything you do, remember, let's keep talking sports. Bye for now. All right, so uh, that's the show. Before I go, let me quickly uh, say a big thank you to Shagun Vincent for his time on yeah. the show. Every thank you to you and Austin. Uh, we've had a great show tonight, and hopefully next week at God's Grace, God's playing our lives, so I will be here live and direct. All right, that's the show today. We do hope you have enjoyed everything we've been able to bring to you. We'll be back here again next week. Enjoy your weekend. Miami Adebayo. Bye-bye now.